when you land and your worst nightmare becomes real, you find out your child just followed in his father's footsteps, allegedly. You don't know anything about the case at that time. They're just telling you your son is locked up in a foreign country on a murder charge. Before you get into all that you started to do, what is going through your mind at that time? Because it was not too many years before that that you found yourself in a similar situation here in the States. Yo, yo, I'm I'm your friend, man. What was in my head that day, man? A tear dropped from my eye, man. Like one tear. I'm not even talking about a thousand tears. A tear dropped from my eye because I said, this is the same situation and predicament I was in. But I said to myself, I just got off the plane on a 24-hour flight. And I said, this is totally different. This is Namibia, Africa. You know what I'm saying? Um, mine led up into something, led up into a history. You know what I'm saying? Like they say, if you smoke weed, you graduate from weed to this to that. So mine was graduating. This was something that never really graduated, something that I never really seen coming. And then it being Namibia, Africa, my mom was, where would you get a gun from? Who would you want to kill? Who would you want to murder? Like what happened? That's all that was on my mind, man. And, and it went from a shake to a shiver because you got to remember, I'm landing in Africa now where they looking at me as food right now. Everybody's running up to me, asking me, yo, do you want a cab? Do you want this? Because I came at the spur of the moment. So now I got to put my life in the hands of a cab driver. I don't know where I'm going. I just got an address to a hotel that I said, okay, now when I get here, what do I do? First thing is to call the legal aid lawyer that they gave my son because now we got to get a real lawyer. You know what I'm saying? So I go into work mode right from there. When can I see my son to see exactly what's going on? Am I safe? That was the second thing. About, am I safe here? So once I got those things in perspective, I went directly to the jail. Okay. I never been to what what is it, Nibia? Namibia. Namibia. I've never been there. I've been to Africa a few different parts. Never to Nib Namibia. Namibia. Do me a favor for our audience. Paint the picture of what jail looks like there. I got to imagine it don't look like you're in Comstock or, or, or you're in Otisville or Attica. Like, what do their prisons look like? First of all, let me tell you the mistake I made. The mistake I made was Googling their prisons just so I could try to imagine what type of situation my son was in. <laughs> I Googled these prisons that dudes was getting their heads chopped off. And they were so crazy. And I was the only thing that ran through my mind for the, it, can he survive this? Because I mean, when you get off this phone, I want you to Google it and you'll see what they're showing in these prisons. So I said, can he survive it? That's what was going through my mind. You know, I'm ready to stay here. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm getting off and I got little kids running up on me with no shoes, no sneakers, no nothing. Can I get a dollar? Can I get 50 cents? So I'm saying, yo, what is going on? Like, what is it? So I get to the jail. To my surprise, it is some officers there with some uniforms and stuff. But the whole jail was just filthy, filthy. And I'm watching officers go through inmates' food with their fingers and stick their fingers in it, go around it. And I'm like, yo, what is this? Then I see a wall with nothing but writing on it. And it said, oh, that's where you're going to get your visit at. Oh, I lost it right there. I lost it right there. I said, I just came all the way from America. I'm not seeing my son behind a glass that I have to go like this to get around the fog and everything. Call the warden. They called the warden for me. And, 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 and they said, no, he came from America. It's for the Americans. Okay, he got to get an hour visit face to face. 
And that was when I seen my son, man. And and he looked at me. He looked at me, Brad, like the dad that never was really there for me is here. You know what I'm saying? The dad that never is really there for me is here in Africa. And, you know, I held him, man, and my son is taller than me. My son is 6'2". I'm 5'11". So he, he bent down to hug me, man, and I knew right there that the fight was on. I knew right there the fight was on. That first question, I asked him, did you do this? And he said, Pop, I don't lie to you when it comes to stuff like this. He said, I didn't do this. And, 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 and I'm going to be honest with you. Did the second down kick in? Of course the second down. I'm from the streets. The second down kicked in. Me being in that situation. Me not saying what I did when I first did it. Yeah, your first inkling is to say, no, I didn't do it, whether you did it or not. Because you don't feel comfortable with admitting nothing that you could spend the rest of your life in jail with. So it wasn't until some of the things came out that I really felt like, yo, this kid is not lying to me. It's almost like, it's almost like when you ride around in the hood and sometimes you might have a friend to get in your car but he's not that friend that's going to tell you he dirty. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to tell you he dirty until y'all get pulled over. Oh, shit, yo. Yo, why you ain't tell me that? So when I look at my son case, without saying a guilty or innocent to anybody, I, I try to let people know that, yo, you, you have children. You was a kid at one time. Don't forget the things you did at 18, 19, 20, 21. Don't forget the predicaments that you put yourself in that you got away from and you said, oh, shit, if I would have got pulled over just now, your whole life would have been different. You see what I'm saying? So don't say that people can walk into certain situations without having knowledge of other people's plans, as you may say, because it's a lot of times that we can go back and say we was in situations and we didn't know the plans. It's just that we was blessed and, and walked away from them. Because a lot of people point a lot of things out. The fact that my son has a co-defendant. You know what I'm saying? The fact that I don't talk about his co-defendant. I tell people all the time, it's not my job to talk about nobody else. It's my job to point you directly to my son. The one that I brought into this world. The one that I'm responsible for. You know what I'm saying? So we get deep into that. You know what I'm saying? And when you get deep into that, I look in my son's eyes and he says, no, dad, I didn't do it. Did this man do it? I can't tell you yes, dad. I can't tell you no. You know what I'm saying? And I left it at that. You know what I'm saying? He said, I stand on my morals. I stand on my principles. But check this out, dad. I'm telling you I ain't do nothing. And that's what I wrote with. My son is innocent. I can't never, if, if it came out 25 years later that somebody else was guilty, I said, I'll tell you, I told you my son was innocent. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.